And uh, I would like to uh, thank you again on March to for this invitation for during the okay? Is good? Okay. Okay. You hear me? Yeah? Okay, thank you. Um, I want to show you an example of uh, our work in my uh, my group and uh, my lab. lab. Um, it's around the welding, but uh, like I say always, uh, I don't weld because uh, I don't know how we can welding. So um, before the, this uh, presentation, I would like to uh, give you some information about my lab. Uh, we are in Brittany, the west of uh, France. And we are defined on uh, five towns, and you have some information on indicator about our activity. Uh, in fact, uh, we have a main research topic. It's a fashion uh, topic, in fact, because uh, it, the title is the life cycle of materials. But we work on all materials. Um, we work on composites, uh, metallic uh, materials, and all. And so on. And uh, we have an organization around five research team. The first one uh, works around the polymer and composite. The second one is um, a group uh, where we, it, uh, we are head, and I work on the assemblies. The third, it turns around the mechanical structure and the interaction the force on the energy system on diagnostic, and the last group uh, work on the durability of the materials. So for my group, like uh, I said before, we have different application. We work on, sorry, welding, additive manufacturing, sintering and bonding uh, method, and we, we have free access for uh, our research. research. Uh, we work on modelization and we search uh, knowledge um, model. Uh, and we search to uh, apply different multiphysics to uh, work around uh, this assembly. Um, after that, uh, for uh, the definition of uh, distortion or residual stress in the, the assemblies, we work also with uh, some uh, reduced model where we treat only the um, thermal, metallurgical, and mechanical uh, problem. And uh, after that, for uh, the parameter inside the model, we have to define uh, the parameters and we uh, made some uh, characterization to obtain some properties of materials. Um, in fact, if we look the scale of the temperature, we work between 20 degrees and we go to, I think if uh, we have a vapor zone, we have uh, 3,000 degrees Celsius. So it's very hard to obtain some parameter uh, uh, more particularly between 1,000 and 3,000 degrees Celsius. There is no, uh, uh, in the literature, it's difficult to, to, to find this, uh, this parameter. So we developed in my lab some uh, um, apparatus to obtain a parameter like diffusivity uh, up to 2,000 we expect, and we work with uh, LCO about this uh, problem. And um, after that, we work also for the validation of the modelization and characterization on instrumentation, and, uh, uh, oh, sorry, uh, and uh, we have uh, some development about uh, this instrumentation. I'll show you some example after. Uh, first of all, I want to show you uh, a modelization, a particular modelization on the interaction between a laser and the steel, where the, the particularity here is to modelize the laser by uh, Maxwell with the Maxwell equation. And you have here 
in this uh, part the uh, the kaol with the vapor zone there you, you have the fuse zone with the fluid mechanics inside and here is the solid uh, at this you have some simulation where you can see uh, the laser here uh, the fluid mechanics and sometimes if you uh, cut the the laser you can have a pore inside the the welding so it's very nice job of uh, my colleague, uh, Michael Courtois. After that, we work also on instrumentation. Uh, here you have uh, a welding, and we search to put uh, thermocouples around this, uh, this uh, fuse zone, and we put thermocouples with these uh, uh, diameter wires, 50 micrometers, and this uh, thermocouple is welding inside uh, a hole. And we work also on the multispectral pyrometers and the uh, infrared camera. Now I come on my uh, talk because uh, I want to show you uh, two things. The first one is uh, multiphysics modelization with uh, lot of parameters. Inside uh, this uh, simulation we have 21 parameters which depend on the temperature and the time. It's very difficult to modelize this part. And uh, after that, I want to show you um, the reduced model, I think, uh, where is the estimation of the evolution of this 2D axisymmetric shape. In fact, I want to estimate the evolution of the fuse zone. Uh, first of all, the context and motivation, if we look the TIG welding, uh, we are um, with a static welding. So at the beginning, we have contact uh, between the process and the steel, and uh, during the welding, uh, not the welding, but uh, the, um, fuse, uh, the, the, the creation of the fuse zone, we uh, go up uh, in front of, of the steel. So if we look, oh, sorry, the interaction the interaction between uh, the process and uh, the steel, we have uh, three zones. The first zone is the cathode, where we have the power sources to create the arc. After that, we have the, 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 the space between the process and the steel, where we have uh, an arc plasma zone with current flow, electromagnetism effects, heat by joule effect, flow of shielding gas, and diffusion of electrons and ions. And at last, we have the third part, the anode, the, where we have heat transfer from the plasma, flow of the liquid metal with surface distortion. You can see here this uh, variation. And we have electric current and electromagnetism effect, metallurgical transformation, of course, and thermomechanic distortion. Uh, the goal of this, uh, this work uh, is to explain how, why you have this shape. Okay? You can see that uh, normally you, you have uh, heat uh, which uh, arrived on the, the metal but it's difficult to explain this part. So we want to, uh, uh, by the simulation, multiphysics simulation, explain this part, and after we want to estimate this uh, shape. So uh, during this talk, I want to show you some uh, uh, the multiphysics uh, problem. After I used the multiphysics problem to define the theoretical inverse problem with the this uh, shape, and after I show you some experimental that the experimentation experiment experiment sorry, and after I would like to uh, make the link between the, the experiment and the inverse problem. I don't show you the the link between the experimental data and the multiphysic problem. So uh, first of all, the multiphysic approach. So here we modelize only the anode. So you have uh, um, in the plasma, in fact, I don't modelize the plasma, but I uh, 
give some information of the surface. I, I have to define the arc pressure, the electric current input, and the thermal input. In the liquid, we have heat transfer, electromagnetism, fluid mechanics, and free boundary deformation. Here we use ILM method to uh, modelize this part. And uh, in the solid, we have two physics, the heat transfer and the electromagnetism. More particularly in the liquid, we have uh, principally two forces inside, the Lorentz forces and the buoyancy forces. And on the top of the uh, fuson, we have thermocapillarity force. It's the Marangini effect. Now, we use uh, Comsol Multiphysics for the simulation, and we define two parts in the, the geometry. In the first uh, volume, you have heat transfer, fluid mechanics, and electromagnetism. And in the volume two, only the heat transfer and electromagnetism. Uh, I don't show you all equations, but I focalize on the fluid mechanics problem. Like I said before, we have four problems with 21 parameters, and some of which are thermally dependent and time dependent. And the uh, heat transfer problem, fluid mechanics, the electromagnetic problem, and the free surface problem with ILM model. If uh, I look at the Navier-Stokes equation, I find uh, inside the domain the two forces, classical forces, Lorentz forces, and the uh, Beyoncé forces. And we have an artificial force uh, with Darcy force to uh, stop the velocity inside the solid. Okay? And if I look now on the boundary where we apply the energy, we have uh, pressure of arc with uh, radius. And we have here the um, surface tension uh, superficial tension, gamma, and we can see that we have the variation of the gamma versus the uh, temperature. And the particularity of this uh, variation is uh, when you have uh, the, this uh, variation is negative, you have, um, in fact, uh, this evolution, and if this variation is positive, we have uh, more penetration of the fuse zone. So uh, how you, we can obtain this uh, parameter? In fact, it depends on the concentration of uh, uh, um, um, light sulfur. Eventually, where we, we have this variation, we have more uh, some evolution. Uh, sometimes the welder put um, uh, some oxide on the top of the surface before the welding, and with, the, with this oxide, uh, it can obtain more penetration. Now, of course, for this uh, problem, we have uh, uh, hypothesis. We have a lot of hypothesis. I focalize only on the fluid mechanics, uh, where we have a Gaussian pressure for the arc, uh, we made uh, the hypothesis of incompressible Newton, uh, Newtonian uh, fluid. We have laminar flow, it's a classic uh, approach. Uh, the Boussinex approximation. We have tension active element only with the sulfur, but we have to define this uh, value. And uh, we uh, use the Marangoni, the, the, the Sao law for the definition of the Marangoni effect. Uh, that's all for this uh, particularity. Now, if we look just uh, the results, uh, we can see uh, at different time the role inside the, the, the liquid zone, and we see the distortion of the surface. The question is, after that, what is the, this validation? Is a uh, uh, good uh, simulation. So uh, uh, at first, uh, at first uh, with this first approach, 
we uh, made a comparison with another study found in the literature. It's the publication of Tradia. Uh, and uh, if uh, we look at the, the first conclusion, we have a validation of the modelization because we have difference uh, less than three person. Uh, with, uh, but we have a different source of uh, error, uh, the mesh size, mesh size and the resolution settings and the parameter linked to approximation like uh, capacity, heat capacity or Darcy condition uh, between the liquid zone and the solid zone. Uh, so we made some uh, complementary study, the, but I don't show you this uh, here. Now, I come to the simplified modelization for the inverse uh, uh, approach. Uh, here, we don't want to modelize the liquid part because uh, we don't have a parameter up to, I, I expect, uh, 1,500 degrees Celsius. It's the limit of the fuse zone. And uh, generally, it's hard to modelize all parameters. So we have only here a conductive heat transfer with uh, displacement with ILE method. We impose the temperature, uh, the solid, uh, solidus temperature on the liquid solid interface. We made uh, an adimensionalization, and uh, the thermophysical properties is funct a function of the temperature. For this first approach, the experimental, uh, the final time is three seconds. For define the first approach on the direct approach, we use the uh, multiphysic modelization, and we define. Uh, the evolution of the, the shape uh, in function of the radius and time. And we look at the, uh, the descent of this uh, fuso. Uh, here we have the direct problem, classic direct problem. And uh, we, are, we obtain the validation by comparison between the direct problem, this uh, problem, and the simulation, the multiphysics simulation. We have a quite good agreement because we have only uh, some difference uh, around two person. Uh, in fact, the, the, the problem is uh, at this point, uh, it's the, the, the point here where we have two uh, condition, two boundary condition. Uh, we have uh, on, the, on this uh, uh, boundary, we have a temperature, Dirichlet uh, condition, and here we have a Fourier condition. So we have uh, some problem in this, uh, this point. Uh, now, the conjugate gridon method, it's a classical approach where we uh, have used uh, different uh, uh, conjugate coefficient. We test uh, different, uh, different uh, coefficients and we obtain quite good result. I show you this uh, at this time. Uh, like I show you again the, the difficulties, in fact, uh, for this point B, uh, the point B do not exist on the geometry at the beginning. And uh, the, question, the question is how to impose the fusion temperature on AB and the heat losses on BC. Uh, you have uh, Dirichlet uh, condition here and Fourier condition here. So we have a, a singularity on the B point. We have resolved uh, on the, this problem by uh, taking um, linear uh, mesh on this uh, part. And it's quite good uh, result. After that, we have uh, the sensitivity problem and the adjoint problem. In the sensitivity uh, problem, I focalize only on the condition here where we impose a variation of the temperature uh, function of the variation of the shape. And uh, here, uh, I, I, I remind you that the adjoint problem is uh, uh, um, a problem when we have uh, 
the initial time. In fact, the initial time is the final time. And uh, here, the, vi the hydrogen variable don't, don't uh, stay to zero. So if you, you look the residual functional gradient, you can see that uh, we can't obtain the variation of the, this uh, shape uh, at this time. Uh, now, we test also the iterative regularization me method f for the definition of the noise. We use uh, an experiment where we can define the, um, the, the error and uh, we impose this error on the theoretical measurements. So after that, we have to define the parameterization. Uh, at the beginning, we have seven, we define seven control points for the estimation with uh, generally between, uh, we have uh, um, 15 or 20 uh, time for the, the evolution of this shape. Uh, for the estimation, in fact, uh, I show you after we have a, camera, a speed camera on the surface, so we can define the surface point. We have also the macrograph like uh, I showed you before, so we can define the final position of the fuson. And we have also seven uh, temperature measure points for this uh, theoretical. Here, only um, a, f a result. In red, you have the, the, the initial position of the shape. And at last, we obtain this uh, estimation. It's quite good uh, estimation. So first conclusion of this uh, approach, uh, with the conjugate gradient method and, uh, without noise and the iterative regularization method with noise, uh, we obtain a good uh, result. And uh, this uh, methodology is uh, are tested and validated on this uh, simplified model of the anode. But uh, we, we show also that uh, the necessary data are the local temperatures from the solid zone, the evolution of the fuse zone, and the final shape of the fuse zone uh, with the macrograph. Now the experimental studies, uh, we find again the free, the free data Type, free type data, but uh, for our uh, study, we made uh, uh, five experiments to, uh, with different uh, final time, two uh, with nine uh, seconds, and three uh, with 20 seconds. The question is now how um, I put the thermocouples inside the, the domain. Uh, the, um, First of all, we use a thermocouple K with uh, the diameter of, of wires is uh, 50 micrometers. The, this thermocouple the, can go up to uh, 1,200 degrees Celsius. And uh, we can put eight or 10 thermocouples near the, this zone. Uh, and we uh, made axisymmetric assumption, so we can uh, put uh, all, uh, all uh, thermocouple around the, the axis. So uh, now the experimentation, we, uh, we uh, create uh, holes with uh, diameter 650 micrometers. Uh, the thermocouples are welding inside the hole and uh, we protect the uh, wires with uh, alumina road. First uh, results for an experiment uh, during 20 seconds. We can see that uh, we have uh, information. The thermocouples go to uh, 1,000. And we, we note we have deterioration of some thermocouples because it's very thin uh, thermocouples on some electromagnetism problem because uh, when we see, the, uh, we, we look the, um, the um, evolution of the current uh, during the welding, we can obtain some uh, noise. 
but we have uh, some solution to uh, to uh, eliminate the, the, this uh, electromagnetism problem. Uh, for the um, for the evolution of the fuse zone, there we have a speed camera and we have here the specimen. And uh, after welding, we can uh, obtain the shape of the fuse zone and we have also the definition of the real position of the thermocouples. Now, with the video, we have a fast camera. You can see here we have the fuse zone and we can obtain the evolution of, the, of, this, uh, of this radius uh, in, uh, versus the time. Uh, with the macrograph, we obtain, like I said before, the shape, and we can uh, obtain the real position of the thermocouple. The, the, the question now, what is the temperature of the fuse zone TS? It's a, I think it's a real problem. Now, the validation of our approach. So uh, the validation, we use all data, uh, but uh, I don't show you the validation of the multiphysics problem. I, I look only the resolution of the inverse problem. So after formatting the temperature, the evolution of the surface fuse zone and the interpolate curve of the macrograph, uh, we use this algorithm. We have the definition of the experimental, the experiment, sorry, the macrograph with the shape at TF here. We have the video with the position of the surface fuse limit, and we have thermocouples uh, with temperature. At the beginning, we have this uh, shape. Here, you have the time, and here, we have the radius, and here, it's the, the, the shape, in fact. Uh, so we can see that we impose the final shape there, and at the beginning, we are near the, the, the face. So after the, the iteration, we have here 20 uh, iteration. We stop the, the, um, the, 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 the um, algorithm. And we can see that we have some problem in point B. Uh, point B, sorry, and, uh, but we can see that uh, we have the evolution of the fuse zone. Here we have uh, uh, lateral rolls here, and here we have a uh, deeper roll uh, of the welding. Now, the validation of approach. Uh, first of all, we compare the simulated and the measured temperature. So we have a quite good uh, evolution, not agreement, but evolution. But we have also this problem at the end. Uh, the sources of error, we can list uh, all this uh, error. First of all, we can have some problem with the material properties, with the axisymmetric uh, hypothesis the temperature of the fuse shape. We can also have uh, some questions about the parametrization, the measurement noise, the intrusive aspect of the thermocouples. It's, uh, I think it's a real problem. I show you uh, after, and the algorithm. So for the quantization error due to the thermocouples, we made uh, simulation for, uh, we made 10 simulation, one by thermocouples, and here you can see the all with uh, here, the thermocouples with the, this, uh, his uh, wire, and uh, we have here around 12 on the 15 hour by calculus. In fact, if we look the results, uh, I don't see here we have a uh, measure without correction. I think it's uh, more here. Up. And after correction, 
we can see we have a good agreement here for the red, not for the green, but uh, for the, the yellow, we have a quite good agreement. And if we look the maximum error in zone three, it's uh, the, the, this part, we have a five person error on the ETC three, uh, eight person error in TC two, and a four person error in the TC five. In fact, the error comes from that, the, the, because we have uh, all, and the diffusion, uh, the heat diffusion, comes to the thermocouples. So the, the all uh, block the, the heat transfer. So is it this reason that we have uh, this problem? Now, uh, to, to analyze the error in this zone, uh, we underline that the iterative regularization method imposed on the adjoint problem imposed uh, no variation of the parameter near the final time. So we, we define uh, an, an artificial uh, uh, process to uh, put the shape at uh, 18 seconds here. Uh, equal to the shape at 60 seconds. It's not a good uh, approach, but it's our approach. If we look now the results, we can find some error at the final time, of course. And uh, we underline that uh, some errors stay on the thermophysical characteristic and uh, on the definition of the temperature associated to the fuse zone with the macrograph. Conclusion about this uh, estimation, first conclusion, the sources, in fact, are not constant uh, because uh, before I tell you that we impose uh, a Gaussian sources and we note that uh, with this uh, inverse problem, we can define this evolution. The coupling between the process and the material varies in the plasma zone. In fact, uh, at the beginning, we can have uh, ions in the plasma, and during the welding, the, we have an evolution of this, uh, this uh, plasma zone. In fact, uh, if we look at the plasma, we have this form, and we can obtain an evolution during, during the welding. So if we want to modelize correctly the phenomena, we have to modelize the plasma or to take into account the variation of the Gaussian source uh, I show you an example of uh, our work at this time where we, we modelized the uh, plasma. And the conclusion of my talk, uh, we have uh, defined a modelization of the interaction between the tick process and the material only in the anode with uh, heat transfer, fluid mechanics, electromagnetism, and free boundary. We define an inverse problem uh, to estimate the evolution of the limit uh, of the fuse zone. We can underline an evolution of the interaction between the process and the material in the plasma. And at last, to obtain information during the experiment, we measure temperature at different points, the evolution of the surface uh, fuse zone, and we measure the shape of the fuse zone at TF with micrograph taken for different final time. For this measurement, we modelize the interaction between the sensor and the material. And it's an uh, important problem that we, all, all people made inverse problem have to look, I think. Uh, an example of uh, our modelization at, uh, at this time, here we have the process. Uh, we are always in axisymmetry approach at this time. We modelize with uh, Comsol Multiphysic. Uh, here you have the process, here you have the fuse zone, and here we have the uh, evolution of the, of the plasma uh, between two, these two parts. We use here the level set method to modelize the evolution of the, this fuse zone, and here we have the uh, temperature inside the the bath. It's a quite good uh, application. Thank you for your attention. Obrigado. And we have here some uh, photographs about the uh,
ici en Métis School. Thank you.